Welcome to China Horse Business, the one and only podcast about Chinese booming horse market. I'm your host Zoe King, founder and CEO of Wonder Horse from Shanghai, discovering the wonder of horse world. Hello, everyone on China Horse Business. I'm Jiang Yue. I work at TCL Europe、um, Paris branch as the PR manager for Europe. Uh, as you may know, TCL is a Chinese、uh, consumer electronics brand and developed in the international level. I know Zoe many years ago, and I'm very glad, and it is also very cool to co-host this episode with her in Paris. Thank you, Jiang Yue. Besides your job at TCL, you also host a Chinese podcast in Paris. Named Antonority. I will add the link of your podcast in the description of this episode, so that our listeners can check it out. Thank you, Zoe, for sharing also my、uh, podcast. Cool. So now let's talk about today's trend club. So you are going to introduce a nice equestrian club in Shanghai. Founded in 1997. The Sun Island Horse Riding Club is one of the oldest equestrian club in Shanghai. The club is located in the Sun Island Resort and Leisure Park, one hour driving from Shanghai city center. The club has one arena with cover and one small race track. Moreover, the club is building new facilities for its expansion. There are seventy-six horses and ten coaches for three thousand seventy members. Including twenty horse owners, the annual membership fee is from two thousand to four thousand five hundred euros, from which riding class courses can be reduced. One riding class costs one hundred thirty euros on average. The club is focusing on young riders training. They are the winner of Shanghai Equestrian Championship in two thousand nineteen. The most important competition. Organized in the club is their annual internal competition, which takes place in December. So the equestrian sport is very popular in China now. So are there many competitions happening over there at this moment? From 2011, the Longjin Beijing Masters takes place in the Bird's Nest in October every year. This year. More than 300 horses and riders from 81 equestrian clubs will participate in the four-day competition from October 11 to 14. French rider Benelope Le Pouvost just won the Longjin Grand Prix of 1 meter 15 in yesterday's competition. From last year, Beijing Masters set up additional competition in order to allow more Chinese riders to take part in Beijing Masters. After seven steps of selection tournament in Beijing and Shanghai, 115 riders got their tickets for Beijing Masters. As a result of this tournament, named "Road to the Bird's Nest," 48 percent riders at Beijing Masters are under 20 years old. Beijing Masters is organized by Daxing Equestrian. Longjin is the title sponsor alongside BMW and. Castel Coop as major sponsor for this year's competition. Oh, okay, great. So, since、uh, what I understand in your podcast, you have also the China Q and A section in your show. So now we are going to ask you、uh, some questions today. My question is: So, according to you,、uh, why is China horse business environment is so attractive? For so many people, I mean, in the global level and、uh, international, from other countries to come to China to invest for the China horse business. Good question. First of all, Chinese horse market is a niche market with big potential. With 1.4 billion population, every niche market has its space to exist and to grow in China. Secondly, Chinese horse market is an emerging market. The modern horse sport is imported mostly from Europe in terms of culture, training system, breeding, etc. Everything is new here. A lot of things needs to be done. Chinese horse market may be the new engine of know-how and goods exportation for many foreign countries. Last but not least, Chinese horse community is an open-minded community. 
Chinese professionals and writers are eager to learn and to accept the best experience and methods from overseas. That's why I'm very convinced that now it is the best time for foreign companies to enter Chinese horse market. Yeah, okay, I understand. So I saw uh, your post on WeChat that the um, Prix de Lac de Triomphe will take place this weekend in Paris. I have been in launch on a race course for an after work event and it was very, very nice. Yes, the new Longchamp race course is absolutely fabulous. The Prix de Lac de Triomphe taking place at Longchamp in the first weekend of every October is the most prestigious race in the world. I talked to Gislain Bozo, founder and CEO of Meridian, a leading thoroughbred block stock agency in France, two days before the Lac. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Zoe. Uh, we are um, two days before the Grand Prix at the Triomphe. As a professional, as an expert of a horse, what's your prediction for this year's winner? Well, you know, the Arc de Triomphe is a fantastic race, as everyone knows. Um, it's probably the best race in the world, so it's a lot of expectation. Longchamp will be absolutely beautiful, with a very good ground. Uh, and of course, we have a champion filly called Enable, which is trying, we trying to win the race for the third time, uh, which would have, which has never been done. Trev was close to do it uh, a few years ago, yes. but no horse has won it, has won it for three times. So she will try to break that record, and she will be very odd favorite but i think if uh, one horse can upset her that would be a french horse called sotsas who is by champion sire siuni uh, bred by well by galileo mare out of galileo mare um, and sotsas has been extremely impressive in the french derby yes which he won easily. He has a very, very strong turn of foot. And uh, he has then been very impressive in the Prix Niel, which is a prep race for the Arc. Uh, so he could be um, he could be the one that could defeat Enable. Of course, it's going to be extremely difficult. He will have to come from behind and, you know, wait. Uh, he's got a very strong acceleration. Mm-hmm. And I think the softer the ground will be, the better it will be for him. Um, so I think he's a, he's a, a strong contender. Um, and Japan as well is also uh, the third uh, favorite for me. So, um, But, you know, my heart will be for Sotsas, as he's been bred by my brother, Henri, at Ara de Monceau oh. in uh, Normandy. So uh, let's talk about China. So as a horse expert, as horse dealer, horse breeder, you have experience with Chinese clients. How you would uh, describe them? How you would describe their profile? Did they have a um, similar profile for you? So I think um, Chinese have a slightly different approach to horses um, in the sense they they, they like um, they like to gamble. They like the uh, excitement of the races, which is very nice. Uh, they need to understand also the horse uh, in itself. Uh, they need to get experience. I have been uh, very um, uh, privileged to meet Mr. Chi from Sparkle Roll Company in uh, in China. Um, he's a very nice gentleman and very good businessman. And Mr. Chi has been partnering uh, one of our clients, uh, Sheikh Fahad from Qatar, and we have had we booked some uh, horses all to- together. We booked uh, um, ten yearnings, mm-hmm. and we booked some very nice fillies in order to breed them. And we have been successful having booked uh, a very good filly called Sparkle Roll with John Gosden, and another good filly called Big Brothers Pride. Um, so those fili are really, um, really, really nice. We we saw the average one, uh, 
uh, step by step, and then we we kept the good ones. Okay, so you get in touch with uh, Mr. Chi through the horses, the investment in uh, breeding. Did he know already horses before getting into the business? No, he didn't know. He didn't know anything, and uh, we, uh, you know, I think he took it as a. Uh, as an experience, as a luxury investment as well, and as an industry investment. So I have advising him how we could, you know, build something strong in a uh, appropriate way, uh, in a, you know, try to say clever way, um, in not just to burn cash buying horses, but also to try to manage every horse as an asset. That means, why do you buy this horse? What kind of value you put on the horse? Just don't buy it, just buy it and be crazy with the price. You also have to manage the value of the horses you have. So of course, it's a process of being around the horses, enjoying the beauty, being in nice environment, uh, in Longchamp, in Chantilly, in Royal Ascot. Uh, but it's also the process of uh, understanding the business, how do we manage those horses. What I have found with Chinese clients is their excitement, how um, enjoying, you know, how much they enjoy the races. So they like to win, you know, they like to, they like to win. Like everyone? Like everyone, but the, the excitement in the Chinese is, uh, is, is very fresh, you know, it's very new and it's, it's really nice to see. So you have been in China several times? You you get in touch with uh, Chinese professionals, uh, racing professionals as well. What's your vision of uh, Chinese racing market? Well, you know, I am very impressed by China, of course, like everyone else, and uh, the way that Chinese people can, uh, uh, well, are interested in all different fields. I think that um, for the time being, China is a really a country that is on the way up in the way they want to understand more and more and they want to learn. Um, I, I would say that Chinese people are keen to experience, uh, but they need to go through the process of, of uh, understanding the breeding, how it works, uh, the industry, the process of the industry, uh, and so on for the time being. Uh, China is in the learning process, as I, and I think uh, you know <clears throat> Chinese are very clever people, so they want to learn and they want to understand, and uh, they will do it. Uh, I have no doubt about it. But for the time being, the market is not very structured, and it needs to be structured. It, uh, it needs to the industry needs to grow. I am optimistic for the Chinese market in the long term. Thank you very much, and I will see you maybe at the um, at the Triomphe. And uh, wish you all the best for the for the horses. Uh, wish her have a great run um, at Longchamp. Thank you very much, Zoe. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. This interview is recorded two days before the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. Vorgast finally won the race in front of Inable. Success and Japan, mentioned by Gis Long, ended up in the third and fourth places. What a brilliant analysis and prediction. I would like to present my congratulations to Gislong's brother, Henri Bozo, breeder of success at Aha de Monceau in France. This podcast is produced by Wonder Horse, the platform offering international horse-related experience to Chinese horse lovers. I'm your host, Zoe King. See you next Monday on China Horse Business.